today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Black Series 50th Anniversary Clone Wars Arc Trooper. And here we have the figure standing straight out of the box without any crazy poses or accessories. First impressions, I personally prefer the Phase 1 Clone Trooper armor over the second one because it, the helmet resembles a Mandalorian helmet better than the Phase 2. The Phase 2 looks more like a Stormtrooper helmet. But I guess that was the idea because they showed a transition from clone troopers to stormtroopers. This um, look of the arc trooper is from the 2002 Clone Wars animated series made by Gandhi Tartakovsky. And if you can see the resemblance, Gandhi Tartakovsky also made the Samurai Jack show. You can see the resemblance in the art style. I especially like all the gear that is on this arc trooper. You can see that there is a uh, little antenna on the helmet. There's a the Lark Trooper backpack, I really like that. Comes with a pauldron, there's an ammo pouch on the pauldron, there's ammo pouches on the belt on the back here, there's holsters for the two pistols, and this combat skirt, also known as a camo. That's just awesome. So now, let's get into the accessories. And here you can see all the accessories that it comes with, and actually big respect for Hasbro for including every single clone trooper weapon with this single release because most of the time you only get one or two with a single clone trooper figure so let's start with the biggest weapon this is of course the DC-15A blaster rifle and it has a really nice paint wash over the sculpt I really like it Then moving on to the DC-15S, I believe it is called. This also has a black paint job. I really like all the little details. Especially, especially this little, I don't even know what to call this, like a little knob here. Very nice. And then it comes with not one but two DC-17 blaster pistols. These are most commonly used by clone officers or captains or arc troopers. Most notably uh, clone captain Rex also has a black paint job. It's the same on both sides I believe. Yeah. But actually um, this particular um, arc trooper I think he was actually named Captain Fordo, no, not Frodo, like from Lord of the Rings, but Fordo. He, his blaster pistols actually had uh, suppressors on them, so this is not technically accurate, but still it's nice that they included these. So now let's get into the details of the figure. Moving on to the details, starting from top to bottom. Starting with the helmet, as you can see it has a nice T-visored helmet. Reminiscent of the Phase 1 Clone Trooper armor. And this antenna actually does have articulation, you can move it down. It is a bit loose, but it's it stays on. And it's one thing that I noticed is that actually there's a head underneath the helmet. And this time it's not painted white, it actually has a skin color. I don't know what head sculpt is that. Whatever. Moving on to the pauldron, I notice there's a little gap here and there's a little hole. So presumably you could technically take off this ammo pouch and move it to the right side. I prefer it staying here if you don't mind, but I think that's an option. I'm not sure if it's actually glued there. Oh, maybe it is, but you could move it there if you want. And uh, this elbow piece is actually a sort of a separate piece, but it's glued to the elbows. But so you can sort of move it around just a tiny bit. Taking a look at the backpack, it has a really nice paint job.
And as I've said before, I really like these additional ammo pouches all over the figure. Really gives him an elite clone trooper look. And you can see that the texture of this uh, combat skirt is really nice. It kind of, the texture resembles a sort of a leather look. And it's not actually, a, it's not soft goods, but it's not super hard plastic, so you can sort of move it around as well. Some person pointed it out that because of these laces, it looks like the clone troopers are wearing uh, Crocs. And I can't unsee it now. So now, moving on to the articulation part. Moving on to the articulation. Mind that this is my personal copy of the figure, so I might be a bit more careful with it. Starting from head to bottom, his head is on a ball joint, so it can rotate around. It can do the exorcist move. And there seems to be a hinge, so it can move, look down this much and look up this much. There is no side-to-side -side movement. The arms are on a hinge. There is no butterfly joint. Oh, there is actually, I'm lying. Move around this much. The arms, the pauldrons hinder the articulation a bit. Can move out this much. There is a bicep swivel right there. The left arm is on a swivel and horizontal hinge. In the right, being a trigger finger hand, has a vertical hinge and a swivel. Torso cannot move side to side very much. Can go forward this much, go back this much. The legs, sadly, these, uh, com the combat skirt, the camera, does hinder it a bit. He cannot do the full Antonio Bandera split. This is as much split as he can do. Can go forward this much. Can go back this much. Knees are seem to have a single joint. Maybe it's a, it is a double. I'm lying. Can go this much. The feet are on a hinge. Go forward this much, go back this much, and rocker side to side movement. Okay. The you can and you can move the backpack and you cannot take it off, it seems like. There's no peg or anything. And I, as I've mentioned, you can move the antenna up and down. Okay, so now let's get into the size and comparisons. And just noticed during editing that I didn't show you the elbow articulation, so sorry. It goes past a little bit over 90 degrees. Size-wise, the Arc Trooper seems to be standing at approximately 15 centimeters at the top of his head, which in inches is 6 inches, and to the top of the antenna, he's standing at 16 centimeters, which in inches is 6.2 inches in height. Harrison wise, as you can see, I'm standing next to Clone Commander Cody, and they seem to be at the same height. Here he is to the Diamond Select 7 inch scale Boba Fett. So, Boba Fett is gonna be taller than him, of course, because he is 7 inch scale. Here he is next to a can of Coca Cola, as always, and I just noticed that they kind of share the same shape of red, which is pretty cool. So, final thoughts on the figure. I think this is a pretty solid release, but keep in mind that this is a Walmart exclusive, so it might be a bit more harder to find for some people. I was lucky enough to find it at a local store for a decent price, but this was the only one available, so yeah, pretty lucky me. I really like this um, cherry color scheme that they chose for this figure. It um, really gives up a vibrant color. Uh, when I was watching this Clone Wars show as a kid, I never would have thought that one day we would get an action figure of this badass clone trooper that we saw. Even though that the pistols are not totally accurate, it also comes with um, two additional blaster rifles. That's pretty cool. It, it kind of comes off as a deluxe figure, even though it is not. And the old school um, Clone Wars, Star Wars um, box that they used for this figure 
as well for the Grievous release and the Mace Windu. It really gives me some iconic, nostalgic vibes. So that was my review of this figure. It was me, the collector. If you liked the video, consider consider leaving a like. Or if you didn't like the video, consider leaving a dislike. That's an option for you as well. And if you like what I'm doing, consider subscribing to my channel. Um, take care and goodbye.